Hello, welcome to the physics classroom. My name is Shikifa. Today uh, we're going through these subjects which is turning effects of the forces or called the story or moments. It says that um, we said in the previous session that the forces can cause the shape of the matter an object to change or it can cause um, the movement of the objects or the, um, motion of the object to change or the forces can also change the direction of the motion of the objects and they can change the size of the matters. And here we are talking about this uh, uh, important topic that a uh, force can house a rotation of an object uh, around a fixed point or the center of the rotation. Um, we see that uh, if you apply a force on an object, which is actually can move around a um, pivot or fulcrum or uh, a center of the rotation from to a point, a fixed point uh, like this, so it is this is the, the torque or the moments uh, of this force that cause the object to rotate in any direction around a fixed point. Um, as you can see, a force can cause a rotation of an object around a fixed point or center of rotation, which is called, or you can call it as a fulcrum or a uh, pivot. The examples can be like when you open the door. The door is uh, actually um, fixed uh, in a one point by a hinge to the wall and from another part there is two knobs attached to the door far away from the hinge of the door. So if you want to open and close the door, the door will actually rotate around the fixed point which is the hinge of the door, I would call it here. Or another example is like when you want to open the bottle by using the bottle opener. What is the unit of this uh, torque? It is in Newtons. Um, it's measured in Newtons. The force actually is in Newtons. So and the torque actually unit is in Newton meters. This is the unit of the force and the unit of the torque is in Newton meters. Uh, what actually, what formula do you use to calculate the torque or the moments of the objects? It is equal to torque or the moments equals to force times distance. Uh, so force should be Newtons and the distance can be in meters or in centimeter. So it is in meters, it becomes Newton meter, so it is in centimeter, you have Newtons, centimeter what usually we use in Newton meter. So we can say that the torque is the product of the force and the perpendicular distance from the pivot to the line of the action of the force. What does that mean? So you consider this, this is a seesaw which is balanced. It is placed on a center point, a fixed point, we call it as a pivot. So uh, there are two persons actually sitting here, one sitting here and there. So these objects that are placed on this uh, arm of the fulcrum or the pivot, so it caused a, a rotation uh, the, based on the amount of the force and the distance they are placed away from the pivot. So if I apply a force here at this point, so it will be the a line of the action of the force. The line of the action of the force will be here. The distance is perpendicular distance from the pivot. So where is the pivot? This is where the uh, pivot is placed on. This is the line. So the distance from here to the line of the action of the force is called a distance here. This is distance. It can write as D, or it can be as R because it's like a radius or a radial uh, distance. Radius or distance. Um, 
So the force is applied here at this point. So this is the line of the action of the uh, force. And the distance between the pivot and this line, uh, the perpendicular distance, uh, is called as a meter or centimeter can be a distance. Um, so for measuring the amount of the rotation, yeah, the moments or the torque, we have to write T equals to force, which is in Newton. Okay, so force times the distance. Yeah, it can be R or it can be D. I first write D to make it clear for you. It is the distance. Okay, so you can calculate the uh, moment or the torque by placing it inside this formula. So the next thing that you have to know that the rotation um, has uh, two directions. It can be two directions, one clockwise and the other one can be anticlockwise. So because the torque or the moments has a uh, direction and at the same time has a size, so we say that the uh, torque or the moments is a kind of the vector quality. So very important that you know that the torque is a Vector quantity because it has both it has both size or and direction. So it's very important to know that. What are is the size? The size is measured from here. But how do you show the direction? The direction you have to know if it is anticlockwise or anticlockwise. What does that mean? Imagine, suppose that we have a, which is the screen of a clock here. So, if the rotation happens at the same direction as the handles of the clock moves, so it is called as a clockwise. <coughs> it is clockwise. We usually show it by a negative sign. And then here, if we have anti-clockwise rotation, which is in the opposite direction of the movements of the handles of the clock, which is called as an anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise, or counterclockwise, counterclockwise. And we show it by a positive sign in front of the value here. Whatever you gain here, for example, it can be 20 or the figure here, and you have to place a sign, positive or negative. The positive shows that it is counterclockwise direction, and the minus shows that it is uh, anticlockwise direction. In this diagram that we have here, uh, let me clean the board fast. Um, and this diagram, we want to show if this force causes a rotation uh, in anticlockwise or clockwise. So, if you want to know, so we push the lever down from and to this point, you're pushing it down. So, we cause it to turn around the pivot on this direction. So, this is Counterclockwise, counterclockwise. So this direction, we say that the counterclockwise is considered as a positive value. So if I apply the force here, at this point, um, so this torque here should be positive. If I want to calculate the torque here, it is F times D, so that the force in Newton, and the distance is from here to this point. So you just place it here and put it where it is. And the sign, you have to gain the value. And the sign, if you want to mention, you should know that this force causes a rotation in this direction. So it is clockwise rotation. Clockwise rotation value is, um, is minus negative. So whatever you gain becomes negative and your value should be in your 
can be 20, for example, Newton meters of water. So because the sign is negative, so it means that uh, the direction of the rotation is clockwise. So we understand that when we apply a force on an object uh, or, or place on a fixed point, uh, so they may cause a rotation clockwise or anti-clockwise. And if the, um, the anti-clockwise uh, rotations or the torques and the clockwise rotations are uh, they balance out each other, it means that uh, there won't be any torque or moments. So if the net uh, torque or the net moments uh, here caused by the forces and the both sides of this lever, for example, are, are equal or the same, uh, same sizes, uh, so the sum of the torques will be uh, zero. It means that there won't be any uh, moments, uh, moments uh, around the fixed point. But if there is a net force, I mean the sum of the some of the moments are not equal to zero. They are not zero. So there is more than zero, greater than zero. It means that we have torque here, Count, counterclockwise or uh, uh, or clockwise. So if the beam here is balanced, if balanced, what does that mean? If the both sides is balanced and there is no turning effect caused by the forces, what does that mean? So if the counterclockwise and the uh, clockwise moments are equal um, or the same sizes, so it means that the, uh, there is no torque balance, so it means that no torque we have. And also we can conclude that the net torque, sorry, the net uh, torque is equal to zero. What does that mean? I can show like this, for example, net torque equals to zero. It means that this will be uh, stand on this beam on this uh, pivot uh, straight. But, but if there is torque, it means that if clockwise and anti-clockwise. Anticlockwise moments or torques uh, are greater than zero. It means that torque here, the torque here, is not zero; is bigger than zero. Here. We have a torque. It means that the sum of the torques, sum of the torques here, is equal to, is not equal to zero. So it means that there is, so there is, there is torque. There is torque. There is a rotation. Okay. How do you calculate the rotation here? I use another color to write the formula here. If there is a torque, we have another formula. If the uh, forces of balance, if the, mom uh, the moments are balanced, you can use this formula. It means that the torques, the sum of the torque, the torques here is equals to zero. It means that force times d equals to force times d here, clockwise and anticlockwise. So it means that for some of the it is clockwise and anti-clockwise moments should be equal to each other. But here if there is a rotation, if there is a rotation, um, so we can say that uh, if the force is actually acting uh, perpendicular 90 degree uh, to the uh, lever, 
to the to the object, you can use this formula. And if, if there are balance, you can use, use this formula. But um, when there is a force, we have another formula that we can use for the torque if the force is applied into an angle um, on the lever. So if there is an angle for the lever, so we have we can write R, which is radius, or the distance that you have. And we have F, which is a force, and we have sine theta. Is the angle between the force and the, uh, the lever arm. I will show you on the diagram. So this is the formula that we use for the torque if there is an angle between the, uh, the, the force, the force is applied in an angle. So R here is the radial vector as a distance uh, from the where the force has been applied to the uh, pivot of central rotation, and then F is the force, sine theta. Theta is the uh, angle between the force and also the, the force vector and uh, the radial vector. The radial and the force vector, the angle between them is called as theta. So I explain here again for you that uh, if there are there in the in the forces, the anti-clockwise uh, rotations and the clockwise uh, moments, there are uh, actually equal. So uh, it means that there are balance. So the sum of the net for this net torque or the uh, moment would be zero. It means there won't be any rotation around the uh, center of the rotation or the pivot. Then, um, so you can use this um, equation to calculate the torque, uh, the torque or the, of each of these uh, forces applied on the object. Uh, force times distance of the clockwise actually forces and the force anti-clockwise uh, times distance on uh, the other side of the uh, beam. And if the net mo moments or the torques are not equal and they are more than zero, greater than zero, then you have rotation around that fixed point of the pivot. So um, it means that the sum of the torques will be greater than zero, it's not zero. And the what you use here to, uh, if uh, the forces are on the line and on the uh, perpendicular to the um, to the lever R, so it means that uh, you can use this formula here, the torque equals to force times D. And if the uh, actually force is applied on angle, there is an angle between force applied and the uh, radial vector, and then you have to use this formula, torque equals to radial vector and the radius times uh, force times sine theta. The radius uh, we set here is equal to the distance from the force to the pivot and the force, the amount of the force applied in Newton's, the sine theta, theta is an is a, uh, angle between the force and also the radial vector. I will give you some example below on uh, the next part to help you to um, use all these information that you have learned here, all these uh, formulas, uh, to calculate the torque of these different uh, forces.